Okay, good afternoon. So today, not ngon kaniya. I hope everyone had a good lunch uh, and is ready and awake to see two more lectures this afternoon. One on seizure and one on shock. I mean, sorry, stroke. Ba, yom sang kum than not ngon kaniya stroke stroke bahat ngai trang ruy hai. Hai lang ini yung min merian pi tiet at tramento ti muoi niye om pi ka prakat nang muoi tiet niye om pi stroke. So this lecture will be on seizure, and we're going to cover the following things. We'll start with an introduction to seizures. We'll talk about the differential diagnosis and secondary causes of seizure. We'll talk about the history and focused physical exam for seizures. Ba, merian ni yung niye ang pika prakat. Ang chang ko ang nong robo merian ti mo yung nung niye ang pika sa ipadam. Ka thua robo ni chay nyek nung mula hat. We'll talk about diagnostic tests to obtain treatment, special patient populations, and finally some precautions and pitfalls of treating seizures. While we go through all of that information, I'd like you to keep the following case in mind. The case is a 29-year-old, previously healthy man with 10 minutes of thrashing movements of the arms and legs and unresponsiveness. Okay. His airway is clear and he has an intact gag reflex. His breathing is comfortable and he has clear breath sounds. With circulation, he has a strong radial pulse and on disability, he responds to painful stimuli, but is not alert or oriented. So just keep the patient in mind as we go through all of the information. We're going to start with an introduction to seizures. Seizures are defined as an occasional, sudden, excessive, and rapid electrical discharge in the brain that results in abnormal neurologic function. Primary seizures are idiopathic. In other words, they don't have an identifiable cause. Secondary seizures result from a structural, toxic, metabolic, or environmental disorder that affects the patient. They're more of a symptom. So why should we talk about seizures in Cambodia? Well, seizures are relatively common. I'm sure you've seen them in the hospitals in which you work. 
Secondary seizures are more common than primary seizures, and those that result from a CNS infection or a central nervous system infection are associated with severe morbidity and mortality. ចំណាយឯកាបកាច់ដោយមូលហេតុផ្សេងផ្សេងទៀតនោះវាមានអត្រាខ្ពស់ជាង In treating seizures effectively and efficiently we can very much improve the patient's outcome. When a patient is having a seizure, the normal anatomy or metabolic or biochemical function of their neurons becomes disrupted. Seizures are classified as general, in which consciousness is lost. Or partial, in which a more specific area of the brain is affected. The most dangerous is status epilepticus, in which you have a continuous seizure for 30 minutes or more. If a patient has more than two seizures without full recovery of consciousness between the attacks, this is also status epilepticus. It is incredibly important to recognize status and treat it early because the mortality from status epilepticus is very high. Twenty percent of cases of status result from an underlying brain injury. Um, mortality is highest among the elderly who have suffered a hypoxic or ischemic insult to the brain. The other very important point about status is that the longer a seizure continues, the more difficult it is to control. So we're going to talk briefly about other illnesses that can look like seizures, and then we're going to talk about secondary causes of seizure. Most importantly, it's 
it's you must differentiate between seizure and syncope or passing out. Mùa hè mùi sen tiết là dương trời tròn trắng, cứ dương trời nhẹ ở đắt rồi viên ca bạc cát nâng ca sò cổ. Forty to fifty percent of patients who pass out can also have twitching motions that may make you think they are having a seizure. Chẳng miên bị sai sấp từ hà sấp thì rồi nơi nẹ chùm ngư đại sò cổ nâng quạt tay từ miên ca còn trạ. Đại thua ở dưới miên ca kích trật lõm từ lưu ca bảo cạch. Stroke can both be a cause of a true seizure or the presentation of the stroke can look like a seizure. Chúng này ở stroke nâng có chí mù là hai mũi ác thua ở bảo cạch đáy có bằng tay sẽ cầm phiếp này stroke bê khá dương ác miên ca trật lõm tha chí ca bảo cạch. Patients can have psychiatric illness that makes them behave as if they have a seizure as well. Nếu chúng ta chẳng nôn tiếng nâng tiện tông tên nâng rụp lời chật bê khá, dừng mơ tới quát vừa đôi chìa bạc cạnh chẳng. Extra pyramidal reactions to medications and hyperventilation syndrome are other disorders that can look like seizures. Chúng ta chẳng nôn tiếng nâng tiện tông now we're going to talk about causes of seizure. So causes of secondary seizure. Chẳng là bên đây giờ nâng thưa ca bị phía xa tẹo tông từ nâng mù là hẹt. There are a number of things written on our slides that can cause seizures. It's difficult to remember them all. But it is easy to remember four main categories. Infections, Metabolic disorders, anatomic disorders, or toxins that can cause seizures. Có vấn đề dương miên mua là hai trăm bông buôn đại nghi sưu trong ca trong trạm nút cứ tìm mũi tẹt tông từ nâng ca một cò rốt, tìm pí tẹt tông từ nâng metabolic, tìm bảy tẹt tông từ nâng ca bị phê bị chia, nâng tìm bốn tẹt tông từ nâng sa thịt bùn. It is incredibly important to diagnose what caused the patient's seizure. We mean that it's important to diagnose the patient's seizure. This allows you, obviously, to treat the cause so that you can prevent more seizures. Just with the diagnosis, we should look at the cause. How do we diagnose the cause? Let's talk about some of the aspects of the focused history when you're taking care of a seizure patient. Chẳng dừng từ bộ mô bộ miền tẹo tông từ nâng bộ vọt chẳng ngữ nơi bê đại dương bộ đo ca phía ba nâng thai tóm nẹ chẳng ngữ để miền bộ cạch. These patients might not be able to talk with you so talk with their family or whoever brought them to your hospital. Chẳng nẹ chẳng ngư bà cách nâng cốt bà hai chìa bị bạc khăn nông ca nì dây tờ căn lực rù nẹ cửu Có bần tay dương ai xua xùm nuôi tầng ổn ní tờ căn nẹ thai tốm rư cò nẹ đại dụng nẹ chẳng ngư một căn tì bệt You want to talk about the character of the seizure that they've had Did they have any preceding symptoms before having the seizure? How long was the seizure? Did they bite their tongue or have urinary incontinence? Chẳng dừng ác xua nâng đi dây mùi quát tẹo tông tên lẹ khả nạn đi ca bạc cạch. Chẳng bê khá, ca bạc cạch nâng ác ở đằng môn. Hãy dừng thật xua ông bì rì dạ bê nè ca bạc cạch. Hãy bình nất mơ ca khám ổn đát. Rức bê khá, nẹ chùm ngư nâng quát màn ác cực cơm. Rức có cạch nôm, rức có bần tô bóng đòi màn đăng luôn. Did the patient have tonic-clonic movements? Did they have a post-icto or a period of time after the seizure in which they were confused. 
Young binh mơ tan nát chung ngưng, quát mìn chó nát, tôn nát clone nát rute, hai bê clan nát chung ngưng, quát ác mìn ca bung 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 The answers to these questions can help you distinguish between syncope or passing out and seizure. Chang chim lao tang oni, viet hoa yung is ruk nong kao ket nung nyej a dat pika chalko, tang nung ka prokat. It is also important to understand if the patient has had seizures before. Hai bia komins ra sung kan mutiet dai, da yung trak dung om pi. Is there anything that is happening that could have made their seizures worse? Are they taking their medications? Have they had sleep deprivation? Are they drinking alcohol? Bạn chẳng bê khá lạc, nẹ chừng ngư nâng quạt bà cách đời xa ca pra pra thân nắm. Rư có quạt nâng chìm nụ mà nẹ đè đếch màn bán cực cơn. Rư quạt pra thân nắm nhiên, rư chì nẹ pra mặc. If this is the first time the patient has had a seizure, you again want to ask questions that will help you determine what the cause of the seizure was. Questions such as, did they have a head injury? Have they had a severe, persistent headache? Do they have a history of diabetes or other metabolic problems? Do they have a history of cancer or thyroid problems? Are they taking any blood thinning medications? And then, do they have a history of alcohol use or drug use? So let's talk about the physical exam. There are three main components when you're going through your physical exam. The first, like everything, is to assess their airway, breathing, and circulation, and to determine if they are in status epilepticus. The second priority is to evaluate for possible secondary causes of seizure, looking for evidence of head injury, looking for evidence of an infection. The third priority is to examine for traumatic injuries that they may have sustained because of their seizure. The most important diagnostic test you can do on a seizure patient is to obtain a glucose level. If this is the first time the patient has had a seizure, you also want to obtain the labs written here. Most importantly, the ones that are in yellow. Uh, sodium, if it's a woman, urine pregnancy. 
and a toxin screen. If available, you would want to obtain a head CT to evaluate for masses in the brain or bleeding in the brain. If the patient appears to have an infection, it especially if they have neck stiffness that may indicate meningitis, you want to do an, a lumbar puncture. Now we're going to talk about uh, treatment. The first, as we talked about, is to evaluate and treat the airway, to protect it. This can be accomplished by placing the patient on their left side, suctioning any secretions, placing a nasopharyngeal airway, or doing some of the maneuvers we practiced earlier in the week, jaw thrust, head tilt, and chin lift. The second goal of treatment is to diagnose and correct reversible causes of secondary seizure. The third aspect of treatment is to use pharmacologic therapy. So what are the medications that we use for seizures? The first and most important are benzodiazepines. I understand here that the most common benzodiazepine is diazepam. If the patient continues to seize despite multiple doses of benzodiazepine, you can move on to phenytoin. Other options include valproic acid, inducing a barbiturate coma, or general inhaled anesthesia. So when delivering benzodiazepine, IV is preferred because it will have a more rapid onset of action. If you are unable to get an IV in the patient, you can still deliver the medication by intramuscular or rectal routes. 
Second and third line agents are listed here on our slide. So now I want to talk just briefly about a few types of patients. Patients in alcohol withdrawal, pregnant patients, and patients with central nervous system infections. Patients in alcohol withdrawal will most often be tachycardic, hypertensive, and have a tremor. These patients are also at risk for other causes of secondary seizure, like hypoglycemia. They are also at risk for subdural hematomas because alcohol causes brain atrophy, making the bridging veins more vulnerable if the patient falls or stumbles or hits their head. Uh, it is imperative to check the glucose in these patients. If you cannot check the glucose, you should go ahead and administer glucose and thiamine. Ba, chẳng hỏi đại dương trăm bát trơ ca bị nứt chết co bọn nhà người không chiếm. For alcohol withdrawal seizures, the most effective medication will be the benzodiazepines, and you may need to use more than you would expect. Let's now talk about pregnant patients and eclampsia. Eclampsia usually occurs after the 20th week of pregnancy. The patient will often have high blood pressure, proteinuria, edema, and encephalopathy. Magnesium sulfate is the treatment in these patients. Per the National Cambodian Protocol, you should administer 5 gram IV bolus and 5 grams intramuscular into each buttock. Magnesium sulfate you should also use benzodiazepines in these patients if they continue to seize. 
Young I prepra, crumb bongs or yaspin, ban pong dive, or some burnet to moon and caught no type of cut. The final group I want to talk about are patients with central nervous system infections. Crumb chong crowny, young pizza, and pea, carbon coroc, no propon, so cypress and dal. These are patients that have signs of meningitis or encephalitis, including a stiff neck, or patients that have signs of having a mass in their brain, such as an abscess or a neurosister sarcosis. You can have focal deficits from these. <laughs> The initial treatment is the same, benzodiazepines. And if they're not controlled, you can try phenytoin. The most important aspect of treatment is to recognize the infection and treat with antibiotics. What are the reasons to keep the patient who has seized in the hospital? Clearly, if they are still seizing, we would keep them and admit them to the hospital. But also, if they are persistently altered and confused, if they have any evidence of a central nervous system infection. Also, if they have a new focal weakness, if they have an acute medical condition, like hypoxia, or if they are in alcohol withdrawal, if they have had an acute head injury, or if they have eclampsia. So I just want to reiterate four important points. When treating a seizure patient, you want to protect the airway, evaluate breathing and circulation, like we do for all of our critical patients. You want to obtain a glucose level on every seizure patient. And if you cannot obtain one, give them glucose. You want to distinguish between seizure and syncope, or passing out, because the workup and treatment are very different. And finally, you want to evaluate for secondary causes of seizure. So let's return to our case of the 29-year-old man who came in after thrashing movements. As you go to the bedside, 
This is what you see in the video. The patient has begun to have another seizure. So what is your first action? You assess and protect the airway by placing a nasopharyngeal airway, by doing a jaw thrust or a head tilt chin lift. We want to place an IV, provide oxygen, and check a glucose. We want to administer diazepam as rapidly as possible because the longer he seizes, the more difficult it will be to stop the seizure. Once you know his glucose is normal and he has stopped seizing, are we finished? No, we are going to be looking for the secondary cause of his seizure. Okay, let's review. The main points are to protect the patient's airway to go through our systematic approach to the patient, like we have with all of the critical patients. We want to place an IV, provide oxygen, and check the patient's glucose. We want to provide benzodiazepines early because the longer the seizure goes on, the more difficult it will be to control. We want to provide And finally, we want to diagnose and correct reversible causes of secondary seizures. Great. Well, you made it through the first lecture after lunch. Does anyone have any questions?